sorry for that because I was just playing this song before now. So let's continue from where we stopped. So as a reminder, this is what we are going to be building. So we are going to be building this system. We can add some data to this table. We can delete, we can edit. So for instance, this guy from India that speaks Hindi, Sunasha Ramesh, can just edit and change him to Indian American. Okay, and I say update. And you can see it changes to Indian American. I can actually delete him and yes, delete and it goes. And I can actually add a new item, for instance, ID of nine. And I add, let's say, let's just say Hungarian or Japan, somebody from Japan, uh, Japanese. And last updated by me, last updated on this date, save. And you can see the guy from Japan is added there. So this is what we are going to be building. So let me put this away. And let's go ahead to get started. Again, do you have the remember to subscribe if you don't subscribe for you to follow along and not miss anything? Subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below this video. So let's go ahead to follow this procedure. Again, the procedure is made is here in my website, step by step, all the steps we are going to follow is step by step now without skipping any step. So let's go right to step one, create a Spring application, and we have four steps to follow. So the first step is go to start the Spring Detail. So I'm going to come here and go to start the Spring Detail. And I'm going to create this application. Let's, the group ID, you can use anything. From the kind of the genius. The name of the app, let's call it data. Um, data UI, data UI, UI app. So let's call it data UI app because we are working with UI, not API. So it's not an API. We are working with complete a UI app. Then the description, let's call it data UI app. So if you specify all these, that is fine. Package name is automatically generated. So we have a number of dependencies we need to add. So these dependencies, I'll actually add all, almost all of them. And of the remaining two, I'll show you how to add it from Maven repository. So to add these dependencies, let's start with the first one, H2. See H2, add it, H2 database. MySQL, add it, MySQL driver. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, JPA, Spring Data JPA, oh, they don't have Time Leaf. Time Leaf is a template engine to help process uh, dynamic pages and display them as a HTML. Uh, web, Spring Starter Web, and Spring Web, Spring Web. So it doesn't show, so this particular one that doesn't show up here, we are going to add it from the Maven repository. So let me see. So it doesn't actually show up here. So so that is one thing you need to know. So some dependencies you cannot actually add them. Again, another one that may be difficult to add maybe let's try bootstrap. Uh, let's try bootstrap. Okay, jQuery. It doesn't show up. So these ones, bootstrap, jQuery, and Spring Web, we are going to add it from uh, the dependency uh, from Maven repository. Let's try context. Context. So it also doesn't show up. So let's forget about it and we add it later. So we have one, two, three, four, four uh, dependencies we are going to add from Maven repository. At this point, I'm going to just click on generate to generate this project and I call it data UI app. I'm going to now go to where it downloaded to show you folder. And you see data UI app. I'm going to just Extract it. Now, when you extract it, you can place it in any directory you want. It doesn't matter what directory you place it. Just remember which directory it is. So at this point, I'm just going to maybe just copy, uh, copy, and I would like to put it in a directory that will be easy for me to remember. So let me just say Spring Projects. All right, so I'll place it inside Spring Project. So at this point, I've downloaded it, the application, I've unzipped it. The next step is to open it in Spring Boot. So at this point, there are some things running. I'm just going to stop them. Stop, stop, stop everything, stop everything. 
I'll also just delete whatever is here so that we start on a clean slate. So I'm going to delete this, delete. Uh, I'm also going to delete this as well, delete. Okay. So at this point, we are going to open this project here in Spring Boot. So just go to File and say Open Project from Files this time. And then choose the directory where you have it. I have it in my document and I have Spring Project, Spring Project, and this is it. So I'm going to just select this folder. And I'm going to say Finish. So this is what you need to do to import this project into Spring Boot. So let's see where we are. The the steps. So now we need to add these other dependencies. We have Spring Web, we have Spring Contents, we have Bootstrap and jQuery. So let me just shift. Uh, let me see if I have another browser open. Okay, so yeah, let me come here. So to get more repository, uh, more dependencies, just go to mvnrepository.com. So let's start with Spring Web. Spring Web. Okay. So you can see Spring Web here, not Spring Starter Web, this is a different one we've added, but this is Spring Web and I'm going to click on it. I'm going to take the this one. Okay, sorry, uh, I need to click. I actually should click on the, the version. Alright, so you can see I'm going to copy it. Now, if you copy the dependencies, you, have, you need to paste it inside the pom.xml. The pom.xml file is the file that contains dependencies. So let me just uh, expand this and go to say the pom.xml as you can see it here. So it opens up so you can see the dependencies section. Uh, you can see, okay. So I'm going to first, I, I like to make the window to be a little bigger. So go to preferences. I, I mean, I like to make the font size to be a little bigger than what it is to general and to to editors or to test editors and go to fonts and colors and just go to edit and just choose 14. 14 is, is okay and I'm going to apply and close and you see it gets a little bigger. So the dependency I have on the clipboard I'm just going to paste it here and you can see now one thing you need to do Sometimes the version might not be necessary. Let's go to take another dependency. Uh, this time we are going to look for Spring Context. So let's say Spring Context. Uh, context. Okay. So these two dependencies are needed for you to actually work with template engine that is um, a time leap. So take Spring Context and go to your project close this and I'm going to paste it there okay uh, let me just clean up a bit all right and the next one is bootstrap bootstrap let's check for it bootstrap all right so all this web just don't don't use all that web just the boa use the first one all that web just bootstrap so click on it and I'm going to use 4.3.1. So as of this time, 4.3.1 is okay. So copy it and then paste it as well in the dependencies section of the pom.xml file. And finally, the last dependency we need is jQuery. So just go and look for jQuery. So sometimes uh, if you forget any of these dependencies, know that you have some problems uh, running your application. So I actually should click on the version. Okay, I'm just going to copy this. And now I'm done with all my dependencies. I'm just going to paste this here. All right. So everything should be okay at this point. So we added the necessary dependencies and I'm going to click on save. Let's just save everything. So if you save everything, it's actually going to download. As you can see here, it's downloading all the jars to your class path. Uh, so let's now look at step three. Step three says create the model. So the model we want to use is nationality. But before I do this step, let's test that. Oh, okay. Now you can see some errors. So take all these versions here. Just take them out completely. They are not necessary. All right. So unsave. 
So what we are going to do, let's test to see that time leaf is actually working, to see that it should show a HTML page instead of showing some response. So if I go to main Java, uh, to SRC main resources, I'm going to go to template. So in this template is where your pages, HTML pages reside. So in this template folder, I'm going to create a HTML page. I'm going to call this page index.html. So I'm going to just say HTML, uh, look for HTML, I can say HTML file, select it, and just at this point, give it a name. I'm going to call it index.html, and I'm going to finish. So it creates a HTML file in the index page. So at this point, we want this HTML file to be displayed when the user makes a request to some URL, maybe slash home. So to do that, I'm going to create a controller. Let me create a controller inside here. So this a controller is just a normal Java, Java class that, that manages uh, requests coming from the client. So let me call it home controller. We will actually delete it because after now, because it's not part of the, the procedure we are following. But well, I'm just trying to make sure that uh, uh, we can actually access the home page uh, that we've created. So I'm going to finish. Anyway, in this page, I'm going to just come here. I'm going to say everything works. Everything works fine. Hooray. Okay, because if you come up to this point and your page works, you've really done well. So in this home controller, we are going to annotate it with at controller uh, annotation. So at controller annotation makes this file, this home controller, a controller, not a re not REST controller. So it's simply a file that manages requests coming from the browser. So if a user goes to the browser and type w and type uh, maybe localhost slash home or slash whatever, is going to come to this controller. So we are now going to write a function that is going to run when a user comes to this URL, comes uh, types a URL. So uh, I'm going to annotate it with a controller. That you must do. That is not optional. So on, your, on your keyboard, press Control Shift O, or you can just come here and place your mouse there, and then it's going to give you some kind of intelligence. You can see import controller and just click on it. Outside that, you can press Control Shift O on your keyboard, and it's going to import this controller, uh, the uh, import the controller namespace. So let's write a function that is going to just return the page or are going to display the page, this HTML page that we created. So public uh, string is going to be a string. Uh, go home. Go home. So this string go home. Is going to just is going to return uh, what's the name of the file index index that that is that is what you need to do but you need to also specify the, the URL mapping that actually will come to this place so what the what will the user type on the what will the user type on the on the browser to come to this place we are we are going to specify that at this point so you also use another annotation to specify that. So you say at request mapping to slash home. So at this point, this application, press control shift O on your keyboard to remove this error. Control shift O, the error goes away. At this point, I'm going to save. So when a user goes and types to the, goes to those, this website or this application is going to run on port 8080. So localhost port 8080, slash home, we expect it to come to this place and I want it to return index to display the home page. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to now run this application. So just right click on the application. I'm going to say run as a Spring Boot app. So it takes a few seconds and it's going to run. If we are fortunate, we are going to have the home page display. And then after now, we now continue uh, following this type by step whereby creating the model and move on with the, the rest of the procedure. So if you look at the console here, you can see Tomcat started on port 8080. So the application is running okay. So let's now go to our site slash home uh, and see if we'll get the home page. So let me go here and say HTTP uh, localhost 8080 slash home. 
So you can see everything works fine. Hooray! So if you have come to this point, you've done great. So we can start the home page now. So what is left is for us to now beautify. Maybe you be able to create a model and display the data on the home page. But for now, congrats, you've done well. Subscribe to my channel. If you've done subscribe to my channel, subscribe now. Click on the subscribe button, like this video and share it around. If you have any challenge, let me know and I'm going to personally respond to you and make sure you, are, you, are, you solve the problem you encounter. So we, we see in the next lesson and that will be part three of this tutorial. Again, let me just show you the page we are working with. So just keep it in mind that this is what we are going to achieve at the end of the day.